We are talking Washington and Penn State in the Fiesta Bowl. This is wagertalk.com. I'm Ralph Michaels, joined with Preston the Sports Cheetah and Marco D'Angelo. Preston, when the season started, both teams expected to be perhaps in the playoffs. Washington coming off their playoff. Penn State disappointed not to get in there last year. While both are 10 and 2, who comes out with the bowl win here? This is one game I won't even pretend to, to like a side. I think both teams are really strong. I don't think either team should be favored. I think my number was exactly pick or half a point, you know, one direction with my power ratings. I, I will say when you look at strength of schedule stuff, especially for two teams that are ranked so high and big names teams, this is the biggest discrepancy of any of those top bowl games where Penn State played the fourth toughest schedule and Washington played the 40 sec, 42nd toughest schedule. And I think it is what bit them is after playing six or seven cupcakes to start the year, they go into Arizona State, who's a little better than average, and they lay that egg and lose that game just because they hadn't really been tested yet. Whereas Penn State, you know, throughout the year was just playing, you know, great teams every other week. So I would maybe side that direction just because I believe in the, you know, there is something to playing a lot of good teams over the course of a season and maybe playing just two if you're in Washington's case and just being able to play to that level uh, more regularly. But I will say Chris Peterson with extra time to prep for a bowl game. I mean, he's the GOAT. I, 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 it's hard to bet against him. So that's why I can't pick a side in this. And I, I think the total is actually spot on 55. My number was, I think, just right above that. So it's a pass for me. Penn State offense, Washington defense, Penn State without their head coach now, who, I mean, without their OC, oh, yeah. who, who, who did leave, and he won't be coaching in this game. Their wide receiver coach moves up. But I'll tell you what, the thing that sticks out to me is the Washington D-line. They're allowing 2.6 yards per carry. They're one of 11 teams that gets over three sacks per game. When I saw Penn State get shut down at Ohio State, this Washington D-line reminds me of that situation. Do you agree or disagree, Marco? Oh, I, I agree with you. And, uh I'm probably going to surprise the listeners because I've been on the Penn State bandwagon for a year and a half now, you know, from last year. I thought they should have been in the uh, national championship playoff uh, final four. They weren't. Um, this is a team that's got two losses on the season, and those two losses came by a grand total of four points. One at Ohio State when Ohio State rallied back from a big deficit in the fourth quarter to take the lead with under two minutes to play. And then they had to go the very next week on the road again to Michigan State, and they lose as time expires on a last-second walk-off field goal in a game that, you know, you say it affects both teams, but they were on the road. At least the other team was in their own locker room and everything else. There was a four-hour delay in that Michigan State game. I had a huge play on Michigan State that day, and it was like, uh, you know, the momentum and everything. I'm trying to figure out, okay, who does this benefit, you know, all this time off? Um, but And it was the week after they lost to Ohio State. So for them to play as well as they did after their bubble kind of burst against Ohio State the week before and in the fashion, you got to give this Penn State team credit. But at what point do they got to start feeling sorry for themselves? This is two years in a row. I mean, yeah, they're going to, you know, a good bowl game. They're going to the Fiesta Bowl. But how can you be excited? It's two years in a row. Their goal was to play for a national championship, and they're not. I'm going to take the better defense in this game, and I'm going to go with Washington. Um, we know that Barkley's, you know, a great running back for Penn State, and he does so many other things, you know, kick returns and everything else. But when it comes down to it, I'm going to take the Washington quarterback over McSorley. He just hasn't made those big plays for me this year that he was making last year during that run. And I think that's the difference in, in a game that you have such a good defense like Washington does have. The one team that took it to Washington, the Arizona State game that they lost on the road, I still can't figure out how they managed to lose that one. The Stanford one I can understand. Late in the season, a Friday night game, they were playing on a short week at Stanford. And then Bryce Love just literally put that team on his back. And he was playing with a bum ankle and still had a monster game against Washington. If Barkley has that kind of game, maybe Penn State has a chance. But I like Washington. I got Washington winning this one by seven. Penn State goes down back-to-back -back years to Pac-12 teams. I was there for the other one. I'm, I'm contemplating making a drive to uh, Phoenix for this one. I, it's like, you know, I'd like to see Penn State, but then I've got, I've got money on the other side. <laughs> Marco's best bet in the Fiesta Bowl. Washington, he's going against Penn State. What a shock. You know that means he really likes those Huskies. 
Remember, seven day all access package at Wager Talk, just $99. Seven days, all sports, that includes any 5% releases, $99, wagertalk.com.